What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and this is episode 2 of building a $20 sneaker collection. In this series, I'm attempting to build an entire sneaker collection filled with hyped up sneakers and just sneakers that I like to wear for just $20. And I know that sounds crazy, I know that sounds completely impossible, but the idea of this series is to start with a $20 bill and then buy used sneakers at Goodwills and thrift stores, start selling them and flipping them and continually building up a sneaker fund until we can finally start to buy some crazy sneakers and hopefully along the way we find some dope hidden gems. If you guys are new to this series, I definitely recommend checking out the first episode first. I'll make sure to leave a link to that in the top of the screen, and I'll also leave a link to the entire playlist in the description below. I also need to give credit where credit is due. This series was suggested by, and also heavily inspired by, one of my favorite YouTubers, Retro Rick. He actually has a very similar series called the $10 Game Collection, which he's been doing for about a year and a half, and what's crazy is that he started with $10, and now he has a collection worth over $10,000, which is absolutely insane to me. So I definitely recommend checking out his series on his channel and I've made sure to leave a link to it in the description below. But in today's video, episode 2, we're actually going to be changing things up a little bit and not just hitting thrift stores but also now hitting places like Ross, Burlington's and Nordstrom's. And the reason we're doing that is twofold. The first is that we actually have some decent money in the sneaker collection fund now. So you guys actually pointed out in the last video that I had calculated things incorrectly. So the amount that I said was the sneaker collection fund at the end of the last video is not correct. And the actual sneaker collection fund that we have right now at the beginning of week two is $58.76. Which is actually just about triple what we started with at the beginning of last video, which is insane that we've made that much money that fast. So because we have about triple of what we started with, we can actually now afford to go to places like Ross and Burlington without blowing our entire budget and hopefully make bigger profits because it's new shoes versus used shoes. But the second and by far the most important reason that we're starting to hit up Ross's is because according to Outlet Deals 12 on Instagram, people are starting to find pairs of Nike Mars Yard 2.5s, which are first of all unreleased and second of all go for around $10,000 on StockX. I know it sounds like I'm making that up, but I'm absolutely not. People have started to find this shoe at Ross. Now we've only heard two confirmed reports of this happening, so it's definitely very rare, but I need to start going to Ross as soon as possible and start checking for this shoe. Now it looks like the sizes that people are finding are smaller sizes, like kid sizes, like four and six and a half. So we're gonna be on the lookout in the kids section as well as the men's section, but we're gonna keep our eyes out today and hopefully find $10,000 worth of sneakers. So let's do it. Okay, so the first stop was at Ross to hunt for that crazy pair of Mars Yards. I actually haven't been to Ross in a minute. And uh, to be honest, looking at their selection, it wasn't amazing. And to be fair, it isn't usually great, but you can sometimes find hidden gems, obviously trying to find pairs of Mars Yards and uh, just really anything that we can flip and uh, add to the sneaker collection fund. But um, just taking a look at what they had, a lot of the shelves were pretty empty, but they did have a lot of cleats. Um, I'm not too familiar with cleats. There was this pair of, I believe, Jordan, was it Westbrooks or some, I think it's a Westbrook of some kind. I actually don't know what kind of Westbrook this is, but it was like a pretty large size. And although it's a nice looking pair of sneakers and although it's new, I just couldn't see myself flipping something that large. Next up, we had a pair of Adidas or Adidas somethings. I'm not sure what these are. I've never seen these before. I'm sure they're one of the more budget models. There was also another pair of Adidas that kind of looked like superstars, but they weren't. They were just another pair of pretty budget looking Adidas. Not a huge fan of those. Then I felt like I struck gold. That's an awful pun, but we found a pair of Adidas Pro models that look a lot like the Kobe 2s. Um, but the size was a size 19, so that was insanely big. So even though this is a brand new pair of shoes, and a pair of shoes that I think I could flip relatively easily, a size 19 is insanely, insanely large. I'm trying to find a pair of shoes to compare to show you guys how big it is, uh, but I couldn't really find anything that wasn't connected, so I picked up my own shoe. I'm a size 9, that's a size 19. It's a little ridiculous, and I, I looked at the comps online, there's no way in hell I'm gonna be able to sell these. <laughs> so, it's definitely a pass. Um, price wasn't great either, so not something that I really felt like I needed to flip. Kind of more of a, uh, I don't know, funny find. Then I found a pair of high top under Armour cleats. I have no idea what these are, but uh, you know, if you're into cleats, let me know in the comment section down below if I should have picked those up. Not something that I was trying to grab. Then we found some Converse's, some orange low top Converse's. Um, not a great price and not easy to flip either. It's same thing with Vans. It's a shoe that's very popular, but it's a shoe that you can find for very cheap, usually in store. So it's not a shoe that's easy to flip. And then of course, another pair of cleats, Adidas cleats, Adidas cleats. But uh, I'm not I'm not in my cleat game. So this is a pair of Kyrie, I think Lowe's. I'm not sure which Kyrie Lowe it is. But again, this was a huge size. I think this was a size 17 or 18. Okay, 17.5, right in the middle. 
But the problem with this is that it's a great pair of shoes, it's brand new, it would be an easy flip, but it's way too big. Like even this pair of Nike basketball sneakers right here, great pair of shoes, easy flip if it was a normal size. But this was a size, it says 13 and up, but this was definitely up. This was like a size 19 or 20, just massive, massive pair of shoes. Okay, so starting out week two, I've already hit Ross, uh, showed you guys some footage from there. Nothing, unfortunately. I found some decent stuff, but it was in like massive sizes, so that's unfortunate. But um, went to Goodwill. As you guys saw, there was a lot of stuff, but it was all kind of like almost good. <laughs> like the good shoes that I found were just in terrible condition and the bad shoes that I found that were in great condition just wouldn't sell. So it was kind of a bummer. I'm going to go hit up one more Goodwill today and then uh, I guess we'll just have to wait until tomorrow and see if anything else pops up. So I'll catch you guys in a minute. Okay, so I hit up the next Goodwill. This is the Goodwill that I usually find stuff, so I'm pretty hopeful about this one. Found a pair of, it looks like Air Force Ones that are very, very beat. You know what I'm realizing? I've donated a lot of the shoes that I get from brands or just shoes that I didn't want to wear anymore to Goodwill, and I'm realizing how hard it is to find shoes in that good condition, which is really frustrating because now I'm like, dang, I wish I could find some of the shoes that I donated. But this first pair of shoes was a pair of Brooks Glycerin, I believe, 18s. A pair of sneakers which actually, Seems to be selling pretty well online. It's a great pair of running sneakers, and the 18s are like last year's models. They're not that old. This pair is just a little bit heavily worn. I think I'm going to hold on to that one. Then we got a pair of Brooks Levitate 2s, I believe they're called. This is a women's pair of sneakers in excellent condition, and the comps online were amazing. So I'm not usually a huge fan of selling women's shoes because I just I don't know the market as well, but this one was like a sh pair of shoes that I really felt like I needed to grab because it was like 6 bucks, and I could probably sell it for 30 to 60 after that, I found a pair of New Balances. I'm not sure exactly which ones these are. I'm assuming they're 1080s, but it's definitely an older model. Plus, the tread was kind of worn. And uh, you can grab 1080s on Amazon for like 100 bucks. So it's not something that I feel like would have much value to flip. Even though it's in decent condition, even though it's a nice looking pair of shoes, even though it's from my favorite brand at the moment, just not something that uh, I think has a lot of value to flip. After that is a pair of Stan Smiths in pretty decent condition. I like the colorway a lot. Um, the tread's even in great condition and the price isn't bad, but Stan Smiths, like Vans and Converse's, I don't think are easy to sell because they're so readily available and they're pretty inexpensive. Also, this pair was missing one set of laces and I don't have any extra laces at the moment. Then there was a pair of what seemed to be fake Air Force Ones or off-brand Air Force Ones, really weird pair of sneakers with a very thick midsole too. Um, interesting shoe, not something I'm gonna grab. Okay, so the second Goodwill ended up working out. I got two different pairs of shoes. I got Brooks Glycerins. I'm not sure exactly which year these are, but Brooks Glycerins in decent condition. And then I also got a pair of Brooks Elevate or Levitate, a women's shoe, which was in really good condition. And the margins on these were crazy. I bought these for six bucks. I also bought the Glycerins for six bucks. And um, six or seven, actually. Six. I bought them both for six bucks each, so twelve dollars. Um, but these were going for like fifty to sixty, and the glycerins were going for like thirty to forty. So that's not bad. And I was kind of hoping to find some brand new shoes at Ross that I could flip a lot quicker. But uh, this will have to do. I think they'll be fine. I'll clean them up. Hopefully they'll move quickly. There was some other good stuff in the store, but. The margins just weren't as good on anything else. Even though I preferred other shoes just visually, the margins just weren't as good. So these are the shoes I'm going with. I'm gonna go home, clean these up, and list them. So let's get to it. Okay, so it's Wednesday, and we did actually finally end up selling the pair of Vans. It actually sold a couple days ago, but they didn't pay until late last night. So now I'm shipping it out. Unfortunately, we didn't make much off this. We bought it for 10, we ended up selling it for 15. Um, and then I think after fees, and obviously they pay for their own shipping. I've just been adding in the shipping fees before, but I won't do that anymore. I think we only made 13 13 So I think we only ended up actually netting three bucks, which wasn't great. So I think we won't be buying Vans anymore. <laughs> and uh, we're just gonna focus on shoes that have much larger margins. It didn't sell fast, it didn't make me any money, so I'm gonna skip these for now unless they're brand new. So that's sort of the takeaway from uh, from Vans. Even though it's one of the most popular models, it's a decent size, it just wasn't moving very well. So I'm gonna drop this off at the post office and we're gonna get to uh, thrifting and hitting up Ross. So next up I went to a thrift store, which I don't go to too often, but that's because I don't usually find anything there. I did find a pair of crazy explosives in surprisingly excellent condition, but as you guys may have seen throughout the video and last video, I mean, first of all, they're usually priced like 25 bucks like this pair was. And second of all, I mean, they, they're slow sellers, especially in this size. This was a size, I think 14, just not worth it. There's a pair of Under Armour's next to them, but again, eh, not really anything worthwhile here. Okay, so we hit the first thrift store. Um, there wasn't too much. There was a pair of crazy explosives, as you guys saw, in a size 17. It was massive and it was 24 bucks. If you look at the comps on eBay, it's just not worth the trouble. 
Um, and also there was like some competition there for the first time. I hadn't dealt with that in this thrift store before. I usually go first thing in the morning and there was just literally like four people on the shoe wall, but I saw what they were holding. They didn't grab anything good, so I'm not too mad about it, but I'm gonna run over to the next thrift stores now and try and beat out the competition over there. So I'll see you guys in a minute. So I decided to go back to the promised land as I like to call it, the Goodwill that always has stuff. Unfortunately, this time was a little bit more dry than usual. There was actually a pair of Converse's, which I didn't realize were incredibly highs, like these ones were. Um, this was, I believe, a women's pair. I don't know why I was in the men's section. There was also a pair of Nikes, which were eh, all right. Not sure exactly which model this is, but it was pretty large, and I was checking online. It's not really worth too, too much. I mean, not much more than like 20 or 30. So I, I was gonna kind of leave that one for now. Next up, there was a pair of Saucony running sneakers. And with those Brooks yesterday, I was kind of interested in running sneakers because I know they can sell pretty well. However, this pair, unfortunately, is not a very valuable pair. It looks like Saucony's don't have incredible resale value when it comes to running sneakers, even though they're pretty popular. And unfortunately, this pair was pretty worn. It doesn't look like it is on the outside and on the outsole, but if you look inside the sneaker, as I'll show you in a shot, there are some uh, pretty worn areas on the heel. And I think that would make it much harder to to sell this pair of sneakers. So nothing really worth it at the first Goodwill. I don't know if I'm gonna hit the second Goodwill like I usually do. I might actually try and hit a second Ross because I believe right now, because we sold that pair of Vans, we've got about 55, almost 60 in the uh, in the sneaker funds. So um, I did my math wrong, as I told you guys at the beginning of the video in the last video. So I think I'm actually better off than I thought. So I'm gonna hit up the Ross, hope that I can find something decent for uh for 55 maybe even less hopefully for like 20 we'll see what happens but um i'd really like to get some new shoes <laughs> so i decided to go back to ross i'm still on the hunt for the mars yard 2.5s still no luck but uh you know this this uh ross was actually worse than any of the previous rosses as you can see the shelves are almost completely empty really not much i did find a pair of um Puma Jordan 1s, it looks like. I've never seen these before, ever. Um, very Chicago looking. <laughs> I, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was like, wow, these are straight up Puma Jordan 1s. It's a little ridiculous. Brand new. <laughs> As you can see, there was a lot of pairs of them. More than any other single pair of shoes at Ross. I mean, there was one for every size, if not two. The one shoe I was considering was this pair of Currys. It was in the women's section, I believe, or maybe the kids' section. I'm not sure exactly where it was, but this pair of gray Currys, brand new. It was priced okay. I mean, it's not its not something that I, I'm willing to take a risk on. So I'm just gonna leave it for now, but not a bad pair of sneakers if you're looking for a pair of Currys. So I just left another Goodwill. So far, everything's kind of been a bust today, which is unfortunate. Ross had some okay stuff, I guess. Well, that's not true. It had one pair of Under Armour Currys in like a size six that weren't going for a lot. So I'm gonna hit up one more Ross today and then I'm gonna cut my losses and just wait till tomorrow or the next day. Just hope that something happens. So I decided to hit up another Ross. Um, this one was a little bit better. There was more shoes on the shelf, which is always a good thing. Uh, I found a pair of what seemed to be almost Stan Smiths with perforated Adidas three stripes. Again, definitely more of a budget model. Not something that I think will sell well, especially um, getting it at that price. Just not really worth it. Then I found a pair of Levi's Air Jordan 1s, which I couldn't believe. Uh, they have like the Travis Scott sort of area around the ankle. They've got some nice, actually nice gray suede on the heel area. So I'm finding all sorts of Jordan 1s today, just not the kinds that we're looking for. And then the one shoe that I was very, very tempted to grab was this pair of D.O.N. Issue 1s. It was a women's size. I think it was a size 6. Brand new. Really great sneaker. I mean, it's a shoe that if it was in a men's size, I could easily, easily flip. Um, but it wasn't priced that well. I think it was priced at like 24 bucks, not willing to take the risk. And then finally there was a pair of Crocs, but it wasn't a standard pair of Crocs. It was a weird like Croc punch out pair of Crocs. If it was a standard pair of Crocs, I, I might pick it up, but that's, that's a no-go. Okay, so I just left the second Ross. Um, I was tempted by like three different things in there. There was the Converse's, which were too expensive. There were the D.O.N. issue ones in women's size, which were actually priced pretty well for what they were brand new. Problem was the comps weren't looking that good on eBay. The um, comparable listings weren't looking that good on eBay. So I didn't end up pulling the trigger on that one, which I guess is fine. Um, Cause I, I think it might've been a little bit slower seller. And also yeah, I, I would have made my money back, but I don't know what the margins were like on that one, to be honest, cause I couldn't find anything in the exact same specs as that one. And then, uh, what was the other shoe? I think it was a pair of Crocs. It was a pair of Crocs for 14 bucks. It wasn't a standard pair of Crocs. If it was a standard pair of Crocs, I would have picked it up because those sell pretty quickly. This one wasn't, um, and I don't think it would sell quickly at all. So I ended up leaving that. Kind of sucks that I didn't grab anything today. I got some pretty good finds yesterday, but today, total bust. We'll just have to uh, wait and see and see if anything better turns up in the next couple days.
Okay, so I'm out yard sailing. I got up really early. I go pretty much every Saturday. I, I don't know why. I just have an addiction. Um, <laughs> but literally today has just been a total, total bust. I haven't found anything, so I haven't filmed anything. No shoes, no nothing else. It's all been like really basic toys and um, like houseware stuff that just isn't worth anything. At least not to me. I'm kind of disappointed. I thought there'd be more, but I guess that's just how it goes. So uh, I'll turn on the camera again if anything pops up, but... uh I've been to about 10. I think there's maybe like one or two left. I've been following like on Craigslist and Facebook and everything. I haven't found anything. So um, we'll just see what happens, but I'm not very hopeful. So I didn't find any shoes, but I did find a GameCube for 30 bucks, which came with two controllers, no cables, but it did come with two controllers and the console itself. The guy who sold it to me wasn't sure if it was working. Um, I didn't actually film there just because I felt like really awkward. It was in a trailer park. It was right outside his house. I don't know this dude, a little odd, but uh, I picked it up because you know what? I figured I'll take the chance. I've actually just picked up a GameCube. You guys might've seen that on my second channel um, and I don't have enough controllers for that. So I originally was trying to just buy the controller, but he said take everything for 30 because I don't know if it works. So I took it home, tried it out and crazily enough, it all works perfectly. So I think I could actually resell the console and one controller for like 70 to 90 bucks. So I'm interested to to know do you guys think this should be part of the sneaker collection fund because at the end of the day I did find this when I was sneaker searching it was a random find um, but it's not a pair of sneakers so make sure to let me know in the comment section down below whether you think I can sell this for 70 and put that money back into the sneaker fund I did use cash from the sneaker fund to buy this console I was just gonna reimburse myself afterwards if I couldn't put this in the sneaker fund but make sure to let me know I'd love to know your thoughts and whether I can put this money back into the sneaker fund because if we do we should be almost around like a hundred to $150 so we can actually start going to Nike outlets and places like that which I'm super excited about so let me know in the comment section down below I'll let you know what I decide in the upcoming video so to cap everything off as I was editing this video I finally sold one of the pairs of Brooks it took about a week to sell one of the pairs and I ended up selling the women's Brooks levitate twos so I know I said earlier in the video I thought this shoe would sell for between 40 to 60 but it just was not moving at that price at least not at the speed I would like it to move so I ended up dropping the price a couple times until we hit $34 and 34 bucks ended up being the sweet spot so we finally sold them and after all fees and shipping and all that sort of good stuff we ended up being able to add $29.99 back to the sneaker fund so that's a net profit of about $23.99 which for a week is not bad but I definitely would have liked more so to show you guys all the sneakers that we ended up selling and picking up this week the first shoe to go was the Vans Old School that we picked up last week for 10 bucks we ended up selling it for 15 and bringing $13.13 back into the sneaker fund. After that, we picked up the Brooks Levitate 2s, which we just sold, bought those for six bucks, sold them for 34, and brought $29.99 back into the sneaker fund. And the final pair was the Brooks Glycerin 18, which we spent $6 on and have yet to sell. They've been sitting around for about a week. I've been lowering the price, but still no bites on that one yet. So as of right now, in the sneaker fund, hopefully I've done all my math right, we have $89.88. But like I said, that does bring up another question, and that question is, does the GameCube count as part of the sneaker collection or as something that we can use to sell to add money to the sneaker collection fund. So please make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Honestly, I'm kind of leaning towards this being part of the sneaker collection fund because being able to sell this is going to open us up to a lot more opportunities when it comes to buying sneakers. And not only that, we did buy it with sneaker collection money while we were hunting for sneakers. So although it is not a pair of sneakers, it is still something we bought and we're reselling hopefully to add to the sneaker collection fund. So to fill you guys in on where we are, if we end up keeping the GameCube as part of the sneaker fund, we now have $59.88 in the sneaker fund because the GameCube costs 30 bucks. But again, if we sell it, we can sell it for like 60 to 70 maybe even 90 dollars depending on how many controllers we end up bundling with the console so that's just something to keep in mind it's an interesting twist and uh We'll see what happens. So unfortunately, we were not able to find a pair of Nike Mars Yard 2.5s, but make sure to tag me on Instagram at RealSethFowler if you happen to find some amazing sneakers at Ross or Burlington or wherever you go. I'd love to know what you guys are picking up. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to stay tuned for the next episode of building a $20 sneaker collection, and I'll see you all in the next one.